Well, same stadium and a different result. Florida State football actually uh, very for three quarters looked exactly like what we've seen uh, in the first couple of games inside this stadium. Got out to a big lead. They were 21 nothing against Louisville. And then Louisville kept chopping away, kept getting back into it. Florida State looked like everything that could go wrong was going wrong. James Blackman goes down with an injury. Jane Lars Woodby goes down with an injury, a more severe injury. And uh, Louisville takes the lead, but then all of a sudden, as opposed to earlier, Florida State really came back strong. They got a defensive stop, an interception, and then go down and score two touchdowns late to put the game away. It's a, felt like a, this felt like a victory. The, other, the right. earlier victory did not necessarily feel like a victory. The ULM win, this felt like a victory. Yeah, the other one was not a victory. I know in the results it says a W by it, but it, did, it wasn't. Uh, this one was. And the Fagan play is probably the, the pick is probably the play of the game because it really did feel like the air was completely out of this stadium. Not that. It was really lit, as the kids say. It wasn't really lit anyway. Um, but once they they gave up 24 straight points and then had another three and out, and then Louisville's going down the field again, you felt like, okay, that's a wrap. That's what this team does. They they just collapse. But then for him to make that pick, and then, you know, I think the second biggest play is Hornybrook hitting D.J. Matthews over the middle on second and 20. Because even after a good, I think they got a first down to start that drive, and then they immediately start going backwards. With a, with a bad, I think a five yard loss and a false start. And you're like, okay, well here they go again. They're about to punt again. So him hitting DJ Matthews a, a few plays later, Tamori and Terry uh, says peace to the kid at the two. Tamori, Tamori, we can't do that, man. We can't do that. Everybody in the stadium gasped and held their breath because it was, it should have been by the letter of the law, first and 10 at the 18 yard line after you did that. But the refs were cool. They let you slide. I hope they said something to you. But anyway, I thought the, those two plays, Fagan and then the pass to DJ Matthews, are the plays they haven't been making. They won't ever, they, they haven't been able to stop these spirals. And then the Fagan pick especially, and then that pass from Hornybrook to DJ Matthews, I think really kind of started the thing. Yeah, and some Florida State fans are not going to be thrilled about this win. They're going to feel like, hey, we saw the same thing again. You let another team come back into the game. The offense just went DOA for a long time. Ricky Aguayo missed three field goals, which is almost inconceivable. But well, then, but I mean, not well, inconceivable. well, he got off to a good start this right. year. And three in that amount of time, and then, anyway, almost inconceivable. <laughs> and then you, uh, but again, you did fight back. And I, and I think you know, you look at uh, the Cyrus Fagan play. It was a nice pick, but there was pressure. The defensive line kept getting pressure. Uh, and then Hornibrook. I mean, it's really one of the most unlikely stories probably we would ever imagine. They came into this game wanting to get Alex Hornibrook involved. They were going to give him the third series of the game. Uh, base, or second series of the game. Third, third, third series, series of the game. Come on, Ari, let's go. Third series of the game because they wanted to, I, I think, reward his work and also kind of get let James Blackman know that, hey, we have another quarterback we want to see. He comes out, gets a touchdown on a two-play scoring drive. Blackman comes back in, has another touchdown drive. But it seemed like they were going to go with Blackman throughout the rest of the game until he gets hurt. And at that point, you don't know what you're going to get out of Alex Hornibrook. And sure enough, he comes in and really played great. I mean, he, there's a couple plays, there's a couple things he didn't do well. But for the most part, that pass to DJ Matthews was huge, it was huge as you said. It was a little bit high, but DJ went up and got it. And then he hits Tamari and Terry on a wide-open touchdown uh, to win the game. But really, you know, Willie, after the game, Willie said if James Blackman's healthy, basically said he's our quarterback. But now you have two guys that, you know, you do feel pretty good about. Yeah, and look, you, you know, the throw to Terry, really the throw to Helton, too, for the, for the touchdown open. in the first half. They're wide open. We get it. But there's more to being a quarterback than just fitting it into tight windows. You have to see it and see it quickly, and he did on both. Now, again, you'd hope that James Blackman sees nobody's guarding the best receiver on the field, too. But there was a play last week where a guy was wide open streaking down the sideline, and he did not throw the ball, did not see him. So that's just good to see. And I think Hornybrook ended up being 15 of 20. And I would guess three of those incompletions were just throwing it away, getting rid of pressure. Another one was a drop by Akers before the half. So I mean, when he 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 knew he went to the, he knew where to go with the ball and he got it there pretty quickly for the most part. Um, as you saw, not the biggest arm, not the biggest arm we're going to see, but maybe in this offense it doesn't have to be. And uh, yeah, I mean it's just you know we we talked about it back in August. We talked about it back when he transferred. We didn't necessarily think he was going to start or be a huge difference maker with this program, but they needed some depth, real depth. And that's why a kid with all that experience has played in 30 something games, played in Orange Bowl, certainly wasn't overwhelmed by this atmosphere. Coming, coming in and playing in front of 30,000 in the second <laughs> this, half. I don't think this stage really got, got to him too much when he's played in Camp Randall for, for th his first three years. So he handled it well, and it was just good to see. And I think they had, you know, 35 points, 550 or so yards of offense. Overall, a good, ha a good game, but man, you can't. I don't understand, Ira. Explain it to me how you go, you just march down the field against these defenses, just like through butter. 
something through butter, whatever you want to use nice. to put through butter. Yes. There's a lot of things, a lot of nouns we could throw in there and get it in butter. Um, and then seven straight drives with nothing. Now, Aguayo didn't help. Yeah. That should have been at least six points. You got to figure he makes two of the three. But still, they just completely kind of bogged down and melt down there. And you can't keep doing this. It's awesome that they responded the way they did. But still, quit with the seven straight scoreless drives. Well, two guys that we, we aren't going to talk about right now probably very much because they weren't involved in the pivotal plays down the stretch. But Cam Akers and Marvin Wilson continue to be two of the best players in college football. Yeah. Marvin Wilson, again, was just completely dominant, uh, just in the backfield all night. And then Cam Akers with three rushing touchdowns, runs so hard, gives you a chance on every play. Uh, those two guys were big. And now you're starting to see some other guys step up. And, you know, just you're seeing other guys step up instead of wilting. And I think that's the biggest thing. I, get, I am sure, just from checking out our message boards briefly, after the game, people are not ecstatic about this game. But I think it's two games in a row now, the Virginia game and this game, where, where guys gave a, a, a solid effort. Defensively, there's breakdowns, but I thought the defense was solid. They played the run so much better, just like we started to see a little bit last week. You're starting to see some signs. If they can put together another good game against NC State, you can feel like there's real progress. And it's all about expectations, right? Yeah, there's signs. Signs of what? Signs of winning the ACC? No, we get it. They're not doing that. Signs of being a bowl team? Yeah, probably. And look, that's what Florida State is right now. They've won, this is their fourth home ACC win in three years. Like they just, they don't, you can't dismiss any conference wins right now when you're Florida State. No matter if you can call it an ugly win or not, I don't know if there's such a thing when you're playing an ACC game where you're Florida State right now. But yeah, I mean, I, I just think, you, this win at least keeps you bowl eligible and can get, you know, it's not going to be a program changer. It's not going to turn around the program, but at least these kids will feel, start to feel better about themselves. They know they can win a game in the fourth quarter, and it is something to build on. The way the defense is played, they, they you know, the offense just couldn't do anything for two, two quarters, and the defense didn't respond real well. But for the most part, I thought the defense was really good for most of the game. They gave up a 75-yard pass where your corner's right there. He actually makes a play on the ball. He just somehow misses it. Uh, but other than that, they, they, they held him to 2.5 yards per carry or whatever it was. I thought the rush defense was good again. They harassed. And the best thing, the best thing, they take a lead late in the game. They take a lead and immediately get a stop. Immediately get a stop and, and even, dominate the line of scrimmage. And even on the go-ahead touchdown pass, Asante Samuel's got great coverage, makes yeah. a play on the ball. It's kind of a bad break. I mean, he tips the ball, goes right to the receiver. That's what I just said. Yeah, no, I'm just saying. Oh, you're was, reiterating. Yeah, I'm just saying okay. that again. Yeah, exactly. He was there. He yeah. was in position. They didn't play the soft shell that we don't like. It wasn't a lot of that. It wasn't a lot of uh, wide open throws, the which soft is good blank to see. Shell. The soft blank shell was not there for the most part. I'm curious, one thing I'm curious about going into Saturday, again, not just put together three consecutive solid performances, really. You know, the Virginia game is a loss, but it was against the top 25 team on the road. Curious what the stands look like. We, we, one thing we haven't really talked about, we alluded to it, but I think the announced crowd was just about 46,000 for a home ACC game with not bad weather. I mean, really a beautiful Great day. Great weather, yeah. It's kind of hard to see that, and it kind of speaks to where fans feel about the program right now. The student section was maybe a fifth full, maybe no, a quarter. No, they were better than that. I don't don't blame the students. No, blame I'm not everybody saying. over here that just well, wasn't the there. The student section goes over to well, there. Well, yeah, was that was. Empty. But they were here in the end maybe zone. Maybe a quarter. And I'm Man. not blaming you, students. I get where you're coming from. But the point is, the the the, the crowd was not here today. You get a win. Do you think that gives you a little bit more of a crowd next week for NC State uh, going into the bye week? I mean, sure. Uh, maybe an extra eight, ten thousand. I mean, they're not going to they're not going to fill this place up again until people believe in the direction of this program. And right now, there's even a win, a win over mighty Louisville. I don't think is going to be enough. Um, but it was a yeah. I mean, you got to assume it's going to be a night game. Game day might be here. It's on the ACC so, network, so you can't watch it at home. <laughs> you got no choice but to come <laughs> if you want to see it. Anyway, we're going to sign off from Doe Campbell Stadium, where Florida State gets its 300th uh, victory, 300th all-time victory inside Doe Campbell Stadium. Big momentous occasion. Probably the biggest one of the 300. Not, not, not necessarily, no, all right. but it's a win. And uh, stay tuned to Warchant.com for continuing coverage. Interviews with a bunch of players, Willie Taggart, your column, my awesome story, some great stuff from Aslan and Austin and Gene. Wrap it stay up. Stay with man. us at Warchant.com.